Good evening. I'm Luis Mercado. I'm Tyler Hunter. I'm GC Penn. Collectively, we are known as Monkey, Monkey Industries. Industries. We are faced with the task of creating a user-friendly Sudoku game. In the next few minutes, we'll show exactly how we did it, step by step. We'll also show you how it works. I hope you enjoy. In case you were wondering, a Sudoku puzzle consists of a 9x9 grid, separated into 9 3x3 three three grids called subplots. For a solved puzzle, every row, column, and subplot must contain the digits 1 through 9. An unsolved puzzle will not have all the numbers filled in, thus allowing the player to fill in the numbers in an attempt to solve the puzzle. So this is our final product. Although it may look simple, I can assure you that many dedicated hours of work went into it. And as with all great programs, we began at a very basic level. Our program consists of two major components. First is a function that generates our unsolved Sudoku puzzle, as well as all possible solutions to said puzzle. As you can see here, our function begins by creating a 9x9 matrix of zeros, which we define as pseudo. Then, by using the built-in MATLAB reshape and rand perm functions, we create three separate 3x3 matrices. We then implement these three matrices into our initial matrix of zeros as subplots 1, 5, and 9, allowing us to construct the beginnings of our Sudoku puzzle. Next, we wrote code that goes through specified elements of pseudo and add in the digits 1 through 9 according to the rules of Sudoku. We originally wrote this code to go through each element of pseudo and eventually build up a completed puzzle. However, this amounted to many issues concerning the time it would take to generate said puzzle. Thus, we decide to use code to instead only fill in the diagonal of pseudo from the bottom left to top right. With this matrix containing three pre-constructed subplots and six additional values, we input this matrix into the function sodoku, a sudoku solver given to us by the MathWorks website. This function would then effectively solve our partially filled in sudoku puzzle and give us a completed sudoku. As you can see here, I create a for loop that will replace specified elements of pseudo with random digits according to the rules of the game. Essentially, this loop looks at the current subplot an element is in, all of the other elements in its row and column, and then decides what number the element should become. This loop is implemented, as earlier mentioned, to the six values in the bottom left to top right diagonal of matrix pseudo, excluding the values in subplot 5. After these values are implemented, we use the Sudoku solver, so Sudoku, to create a completely solved Sudoku puzzle. We then remove 20, 40, or 50 randomly selected elements of the solved puzzle, depending on difficulty levels selected by the user, to create an unsolved puzzle, which her function then outputs. We then once again use a Sudoku solver to generate all possible solutions for a created unsolved puzzle, which her function also outputs. As you can see, we created three variations of this function, each of which correlates to a different difficulty level. We created our GUI using guide. First, we created a grid out of 81 edit text boxes, uh, separating it into nine smaller subgrids uh, by using different colors. To the right are five push buttons. The first three allow the user to select their desired difficulty level. The next button allows the user to check whether their attempted solution is correct by displaying a message in the puzzle status bar under the grid. The last button produces one of the possible solutions to the puzzle and displays it in the grid. The first button of the GUI, or one of these first three buttons, uses a function like this. This is one of our three generate functions. This one specifically generates a normal difficulty puzzle. Initially, we set the variable solution puzzle as global, so they can be recalled by all the other functions in the script. Now by clicking, for example, normal, our GUI displays an unsolved puzzle that is missing approximately 40 values, which the user must solve in order to complete the puzzle. Because of how Sudoku Gen works as a function, there are infinitely many arrays that can be produced. So one of these generate functions uh, produces infinitely many solutions or possible puzzles. So the game will essentially never run out of puzzles for the user to solve.
The second button compares the values in the GUI grid to all the possible solutions of the puzzle using a simple block of code here. Essentially, this function runs through each possible solution created by Sudoku Gen and compares it to the answer the user provides. If a match is found, the puzzle status here bar displays a message indicating a correct solution. If the, user, if the user's input is incorrect, the, uh, the status bar displays a message in indicating that the user is incorrect. The final button in this interface was created in case the user decides to give up on the current puzzle they're working on, but still wants to see what a possible corrected puzzle would look like, in which case they can click I give up. And what will happen is this function here will simply take the first possible solution that was earlier created by Sudoku Gen, and it will set the values in this grid equal to the values of that Sudoku array. So as a quick overview, if the user were to go through, they'd go through a process like this. We're going to run the GUI, and then we're going to we'll enjoy this welcome message here. I'm going to read the instructions, then I'll select the difficulty that I want. I'm going to go with beginner because I'm not very good at Sudoku. Now, this game is generated as a puzzle for me to solve. I'm going to go through here as the user and select some values that I think are correct. I don't really think they're correct. I'm sure these are wrong. But for time's sake, we're just going to put in some random values. Well, I'm getting tired of this already, so I'm going to give up. And I see what should be a correct solution. Well, what if I think this value should be a 7? Well, I'm apparently incorrect, and Sigma Lantern now seems upset. So, <laughs> I'm going to just give up again and check my solution. I seem to be right. But perhaps the abilities of programmers are not adequate, and this is wrong, and this actually isn't a correct puzzle. Well, what if I call this 7? It would appear the game can recognize when I'm not following a little Sudoku. Well, that seems quite fun. I hope you have fun with this game, too. The Green Lantern seems happy now. Well, this concludes our presentation. And uh, I'd like to wish you a wonderful night or a beautiful day from all of us here at Monkey Industries. Bye-bye.